Hey guys, Ozzy Expat here. I wanted to show you some thoughts about buying Rolex at retail. Let's get started. I want to dispel a lot of things you may have heard or conceived of with respect to how buying a watch at retail is like. Number one, how allocation works. Now, we know certain pieces fetch a premium on the secondhand market. This is very much a case since 2019 and right now at the start of 2022, almost the entire Rolex lineup is fetching a premium. Now, anything with a decent premium, especially if it's a commonly produced model, will more often than not move to an allocation sales model. When this is the case, watches are no longer put into the case for anyone to walk in and buy, and they are assigned to sales associates. And from there, they are assigned to clients of that sales associate, potentially with further approval. And it's at this moment where people start getting the fabled call. Number two, what is a relationship? It works like any other relationship. Ultimately, when the watchers come in, it's whatever motivates them to think of your name and give you the call. And this could be for any number of reasons. There are no rules. I'd just like to highlight a number of factors that could play a part as to whether or not one person gets the call and the other doesn't. Are you likely to do repeat business? Do you have the money to do repeat business? And how much? One watch a year, 10 watches a year, are you buying jewelry? What's your purchase history to back that up? What is the margin of the business that you're giving them? Are you asking for only allocation pieces, pieces for which they could sell to almost anybody else pretty easily? Are you a flipper and how do they know they can trust you? Are you going to jeopardize their business by doing so? Does the piece require some extra qualification or approval? Uh, as an example, especially around Daytonas, they may have some stricter requirements about allocations, about a certain history with them, maybe not just purchase history, but maybe a length of time, a number of watches. Have you visited recently? Are you at the top of their mind when that watch comes in? How do they feel about you on a personal level? Would they enjoy seeing you get the watch? Or are you an entitled prick? What kind of interest level have you expressed about this watch? Nothing is set in stone. Number three, there are no wait lists. Now you'll notice what I didn't say about allocation is anything to do with wait lists. Ultimately, the person who gets the call for a particular watch is likely someone who has previously expressed interest, but not always. It will ultimately be offered to the client that the AD and SA feel should get the watch. Now, they are a business, and so there is an inevitability that much of these allocations will go to established clients. But again, there are no rules they may simply like you enough that they would be happy to see you get the watch. Number four, probability. Taking all of this into account, your probability of achieving an allocation piece with no purchase history and no bundling is extremely low on your first visit to an AD. Most of the stock arrives and the decision for whom the watch will go to is made at the time of allocation, which will be one or two days after that. There is no stock on an allocation piece that is just simply waiting around for perfect strangers to walk in the door and ask for. And if you do find a watch that was just waiting there, well, for whatever reason, it wasn't an allocation piece for that particular AD. Number five, there are no rules. There are no rules that are applicable across all ADs or even sales associates within the same AD or even the same SA at a different time. And certainly there are differences between geographic locations and the same is true for different time periods. Even if I tell you the average case, there will always be stories at one extreme or another an example would be someone getting a steel Daytona with zero purchase history and after a single visit. But perhaps such feats are possible if you're a celebrity or prominent figure of some sort, some kind of important referral or family connection, or they're aware that you're a high roller. At the other end of the extreme would be someone who's got a multi-million dollar spend history and has only been offered a Daytona after many years of waiting. This is a far more likely story than the zero purchase history Daytona score. So anyone telling you there is a hard and fast way of getting to a certain piece 
they really don't know how things work. It's just much more complicated than that. It's as complicated as human relationships, basically. All right, those are my observations. If you think I'm wrong or I missed something, some important detail, please let me know down below. And until next time, please like and subscribe.